Hey everybody, welcome to this video in our Windows monitoring series. Today we're going to talk about using WMI with Nagios XI to monitor your Windows environment. One thing to keep in mind, this is generally going to be easier if you are already using WMI to connect to remote hosts. Obviously it's super powerful on individual workstations. Taking it to the next level is using it remotely. So if you don't have that set up and you need some help with that, we have a doc that we are linking right here in this section that will take you to that and give you some more information in regards to that. I'll also reference this document in the second portion of this video where we do the screen capture uh, that highlight a couple other specific points that you'll want to know. Ready? Here we go. So in step one, we're gonna put in the IP address of the machine that we're gonna connect to. And now we're looking at the auth info section. And you'll notice that we can do one of two things. We can use a username and a password, or we can use an authorization file. How would you choose? Well, here's really what it comes down to. The username that we're putting in is going to be the username of, or the username that you're using as the WMI agent that is going to connect remotely. The password, as you may or may not know at this point, has got to meet some complexity requirements from Microsoft. So when we look at that, it's got to have an uppercase, it's got a lowercase, or base 10, it's got to have three of the following categories in it. The challenge is when we get to non-alphanumeric characters. Nagios XI, the special characters here, these, it uses some of those, specifically uh, the exclamation point, um, it uses a dollar sign and macros, so it reserves those. So if the password that you have chosen for the WMI agent username, the password associated with that username, contains those special characters, it won't work in the password field here. So I happen to know that the one I'm putting in uh, does work. So if you have those special characters in that user's information, in that user's password, and you don't want to change it, then you would use the authorization file. The authorization file is a very simple file. It sits in the Linux system on the Nagios XI machine, and it just basically says username equals password equals, you fill in that information, and it references the file when it performs the check, and that can get you around the limitation there. So we'll just hit next, and it brings up everything that we just like to see. So we're going to monitor ping, CPU, memory usage, page file usage, disk usage. Now here's what's cool about WMI. Just like SNMP, it's going to discover what's going on on that device. So this device has got a C drive and a D drive. If we were using an agent instead that didn't discover, we'd have to know that it's got a C and a D and we'd have to supply the D. So that's one thing that's nice about this wizard. Um, it also will discover services that are running and processes that are running. So say we want to monitor Apache as a service. That's something that we can monitor there. Uh, processes, maybe this is a SQL server. And so you want to monitor the SQL server process. You can monitor that here. You can also, you know, you can add these selected multiples at a time. The other thing that you can monitor are event logs. This is really how simple it is. We are done. I mean, you can change your thresholds. Um, you can look through your scanned list of services and processes, and you can check logs and other stuff. But that's pretty much it. Once we click through and we get to the end of the process here, we're monitoring and we're good to go. Stay tuned for more videos.